Word of Life broadcast with Prophet John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. The book of, you know, 1 Samuel chapter number 10, from the verse 1, I want Apostle to read, but as he reads, I will begin to explain some things for us to understand. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head. Now, I want you to take note of some things because I'm going to explain. Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it upon the head of Saul. He was talking about Saul. Now, the reason why, you know, it's important that you know these things is that God doesn't joke with something he does first. Now, Saul was supposed to be the king of Israel. Now, the reason why I'm saying that Saul was supposed to be was because in actual fact, it was not Saul who was supposed to be the king. But the people had gone ahead of the timings of God to request for a king. But God had already prepared a young lad in the wilderness whose time, you know, he was waiting for, you know, to everything there is what? There is time. There, there is a season to everything. Remember? Yes, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 verse 1. There is a season for everything and there is what? A time for every purpose. Now, so the purpose of God for you know, David, the young lad in, in the wilderness was that he becomes the king of Israel and, at, you know, the first king and his lineage was the one going to sit on the throne of God because that he was the one who was found. But because the people requested a king ahead of God's agenda, God had to look into their heart and then know the kind of king they wanted. They wanted a very thick, tall man and all that. Remember that Saul was one of the finest gentlemen, you know, in the land. And so the Bible said, and Saul also came from, listen, Saul also came from, he was what? The son of what? Kish. From? Benjamin. Benjamin. Why Benjamin? I'm coming to read you some profound stuff. You will understand that everything in the Bible started from there. Even what I am about to read to you explicates a lot of things about the two witnesses. Now, I want you to understand something in the Bible so that it will be profound for you now. Now, as you are hearing me, open your heart so that you can put them in their, their own perspective. And then you can infer and connect other scriptures that talks about these things. Hallelujah. Lord. And I will need you to be able to respond to the word of God because that is what provokes the reaction from the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says that, no, read. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head yes. and kissed him and said. Now, the reason why it must be a flask of oil was that Samuel's reign was not in perpetuity because flask breaks. Flask doesn't even last long. Even when you bury a bottle in the ground for years, still, the tendency for the bottle to become lighter and breakable is there. That is why we don't pour new wine into what? An old wine skin. But we pour new wine into new wine skin. Now, listen to this word that is in the Bible very carefully and very attentively because this was the first time a king, you know, physically was going to be installed into uh, or installed into a, a seat or a throne for over God's people because God had already been the king and they had a prophet who was Moses and they had a high priest who was Aaron and so God had institutionalized his own agenda but the people requested for a king ahead of God's timing. So God you know, looked into their heart. I'm showing you revelation. He looked into their heart and then gave them a king according to their heart. You read the Bible carefully, you understand. So Saul was now going to locate the prophet, not the prophet going to locate Saul. Now hear this. The king that God found, he sent Saul to go and anoint him. But the Saul one that was supposed to be the Saul, the king for the people, he was sent to the prophet. Because in the rankings, the prophet ranked higher than him. And that was the reason why his own prophetic impartation had to come when he met the company of the prophets. I want you to understand something here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I go ahead? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's a very heavy word. I don't know if I can share. Can I share? Are you ready to receive this word? Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we go ahead? Karaba, yes. say, talk to me. Talk to me. Now, hear this. So, when Saul went to, you know, Samuel, the Bible says that, and Samuel took 
a flask of oil. But when you look at those prophets, somewhere like somebody like Samuel, he didn't have the flask of oil in his bowel. He rather had the horn of oil. That was what they locked from beneath, from the mouth. They locked it there. And the oil doesn't drip from the mouth. You know, the mouth of a horn is not the bigger side. But the mouth of a horn is that pointed side. That pointed place. You understand my point? Now, when we pour oil from that big amount, is to preserve you until the time of the oil from the smaller side, which is actually on purpose. A purposeful oil. I'm explaining something to you. Now, these are not things that are written in books so you can read. These are revelations from God's mind. Now, so, so those prophets had the oil, and that oil, you know, the horn, they cut. That is why every shofar or Israelite horns that came or that comes on people go to buy, it, there is always a cat. Have you seen there's always a cat? But people don't understand. Why is there a cat? Why are you supposed to sustain the oil? So when you pour oil, it will just drip off. You are supposed to make, if you really are prophetic, make your own seal and attach it to it. That means you lock it and then you put it in your sofa bag. And so when you meet someone God has an agenda for, you anoint the person. So when they anointed you with the mouth, it means that, you know, you are going to have some challenges and all that in your way. So if you're able to sail today, he will come and anoint you from that kind of base to fulfill purpose. So anytime you see me pour oil from that mouth, that means that God has already shown me who you really are, but there are certain things you must suffer for to get to the place. It's an agenda, progressive agenda. So I will anoint you with the mouth, waiting and guiding you to the fulfillment. When you see me pour from that side, then you know that my goodness, your, your time has been fulfilled. Such as tonight, I tell you that there's an opening for fulfillment. Amen. There is a fulfillment. You know, this prophetic arena season is actually fulfillment. Amen. It's actually what? Fulfillment. Fulfillment of destiny. It's fulfillment of purpose. Glory. Fulfillment of life. Fulfillment of assignment. Hey, we are not here to joke. We are here to fulfill what God has placed already in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. What we are here to do is to announce to confirm what God has already done. Hey, that the timings, we are telling you the timings and the time frame and all that, that is it. So that you are aware of what has happen in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give me a wave and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Now, Apostle, I want you to read, you know, up to some point so that I can now begin to explain, you know, further, quickly. He said, he kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? When you have departed from me today, you will find two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelza. And they will say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on forward from there and come to the terebinth tree of Tabor. There three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you, one carrying three young goods, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will be prophesying. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as occasion demands for God is with you. You shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait, till I come to you and show you what you should do. So it was, when he turned his back to go from Samuel, that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it happened when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets, that the people said to one another, What is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Then a man from there answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had finished prophesying, he went to the high place. Then Saul's uncle said to him and his servants, Where did you go? So he said, To look for the donkeys. 
when we saw that they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, tell me, please, what Samuel said to you. So Saul said to his uncle, he told us plainly that the donkeys had been found. But about the matter of the kingdom, he did not tell him what Samuel had said. Then Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah and said to the children of Israel, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought Israel out of Egypt and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all kingdoms and from those who oppressed you. But you have today rejected your God, who himself saved you from all your adversities and your tribulations. And you have said to him, No, set a king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. And Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, Has the man come here yet? And the Lord answered, There he is, hidden among the equipment. So they ran and brought him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see him whom the Lord has chosen, that there is no one like him among all the people? So all the people shouted and said, Long live the king. Then Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty, and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And valiant men went with him, whose hearts God had touched. But some rebels said, How can this man save us? So they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering for the word of God as you honor the word of God. Now, let me begin to explain like terms here for you. Now, Samuel took the, the vial of, you know, the flask of oil, the vial of oil, and poured it upon the head and kissed him and said, because it is not because God has anointed you uh, captain over his inheritance. Now, the when God is going to anoint somebody a captain over his inheritance, the person must be in the quality of the Lord Jesus. The person must be a representative of God. That means God is a king, God is a prophet, and God is a priest. Hear this. Number one, God is what? Or number one, God is, and God is, and God is. Okay, can I prove this to you? Okay, good. Now, God is a king. Meaning that God sits on the throne. Now, God is a prophet, meaning that God speaks. He speaks, and when he speaks, men have to interpret to others, or he can speak directly. Prophetic simply means the one who sits on the throne speaking. Now, so when somebody hears and declares, God spoke and great was the company that declared or published his word. Now, one of the proof to know that God is a prophet to humanity is Jesus. Now, the Bible says that in time past, God spoke to us through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken through his son to us according to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. So, because of this scripture, a lot of people think that, you know, propheticism is irrelevant now. No. That means that it was something that was done in the tabernacle that God instituted, you know, Moses as, as a God to Pharaoh and to the people. And he said, Aaron shall be your word, your prophets. So, because God must get a prophet. But when you get to the throne of God, when God's hood, where he sits, where his throne is, there's nobody that can be there now to be able to be his, you know, his prophet. So, God he is the king, he is the priest, and he is what? He is the prophet. So if you want someone to be a prophet, he has to leave his seat and come down and be the prophet to the people. So Jesus, once upon a time, became the prophet to the people. So God, in this last day, spoke through Jesus to us. And that's why he gave all the prophetic word until the end of the time. All that the prophet who are from the Lord Jesus coming, we are supposed to be explaining the mysteries of all the things Jesus said. Because Jesus is the prophet to the Lord God Almighty. Such as he was in the days of Moses. Again, go 
God had to let Jesus come as a priest. And when Jesus came as a priest, his priesthood was never compared with any priesthood on the earth realm. Because the priesthood in the earth realm could not qualify in that ranking to be equal with him. But he compared him with someone who is a priest from God in the heavens. So Jesus' priesthood was compared with the priest Melchizedek, the high priest Melchizedek, who was also the priest of the temple of God, most high in the heavenlies. That temple that God said, Moses, see it and go and do the same thing on the earth realm. He was the priest. Now the Bible says that. And what proved that Melchizedek is actually from heaven was because a lot of theologians and a lot of people have said that Melchizedek, you know, is on the earth and he's somewhere, some, you know, those are all lies. Because if you live in Revelation, because the word of God is an answer to every question that you ask. Now, the question, the answer here is that when you read the book of Hebrews, chapter number 7, the verse 7, he said, without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the better. And when in the bone of contention was between Melchizedek and Abraham, and Abraham was the friend of God, and God had a covenant with him. And so, the greater one was supposed to be what? Abraham. If we are talking in terms of the earthly process or earthly dimension. But because we are talking and engaging someone who has lived above the earthly principles, the Bible says he neither have father, mother, there's no, you know, age to his time and all that. There's nothing like that. He lives as a priest forever, like the son of man himself. Now, so the Bible says, of which it was witnessed that this Melchizedek lives. So he's the priest of a place called Salem, which was actually a revelation unto David and Moses about Salem. Salem is not a place that is in the earth realm now. Salem is a place in heaven. And the place that will be on the earth that will be Jerusalem is actually coined out of. So Salem is a place God already has his children who are also called sons of God under this priesthood and kingship of Melchizedek. Because he's a king, he's a priest, and the Bible says he's the king of righteousness. And the priest of the most high God forever. Over his own people, which is the sons of God who came to sleep with the daughters of men. Some of them. Now, are we together here? Good. Now, so let's go to, um, why then, you know, are we saying that Melchizedek is from heaven? The Bible explained that here mortal men receive tithes, but there, he uses the word, it is just the smaller one. There, he receive him of whom it is witnessed that what? He lives. And the Bible said without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the better. And it was Melchizedek who laid hands and blessed Abraham and collected a tithe. And in exchange, he gave Abraham bread and wine. And this bread and wine signified the death and the giving Jesus, God giving Jesus, his son, out as his bread and wine. Which the bread signifying the word of God and the wine representing the spirit will come upon the word. So, there's never a time God has given the word without the spirit. And the spirit without the word. They go hand in hand. Are you together here? Now let me reveal to you here now what is happening here in the Bible. It will blow your mind. This is the prophetic I want you to take home. Now hear this. There's nothing in the Bible that is of private interpretation. The Bible says holy men of God speak as the Holy Ghost inspired them. Now I want you to hear this. Now. The reason why Saul was anointed with flax was because he was the interim king. That means he was bound to fail. So he needed not to be anointed with horn because horn is unbreakable. So the moment you anoint someone with a horn, it means whether the person fails or not, the person is still the one chosen. You didn't clap your hands. In 2012, 2013, the Lord told me to fast a certain season. And when I, I was ended, he told me to go to your spiritual father and let him anoint you. And when I went to my spiritual father, he had done two horns. He himself had done two horns. And when in the night time he was going to anoint me, he brought out a horn. I was looking at his face. I was surprised. You know, I was kneeling and I was closing my eyes. But, you know, when I saw the horn, I opened one eye to check it well. And he poured oil on me and said, from now, it is not Bible school that you are going to go to ordain you. All those things could not ordain you. Now I ordain you, go and preach. From that day, I began to preach with power. Raw power, raw power. And I think I told my brother about it. Two horns. And he has a mystery of that, which I'm not going to explain. <laughs> I went to physically meet two horns. He had a vision. And this man had lifted big horns, two horns. Now, 
I want to explain something to you here, and you will understand. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, so he was anointed with flour, so he couldn't perpetuate his own agenda of the Lord. Now, again, some of the anointings we do with the flour is because it has to maintain us and shape us within our time or within our purpose. It is not, do you understand my point? Yes. But, but when we progress and with cast iron determination and all that and perseverance, we are anointed with horn of oil from the spirit perspective. Because normally horns are not easy to come by unless you are instructed. Now, so that is why, so God specifically will say, for this one, do this, and it shall be done. Now, I know that at this conference, oil is pouring upon people from the horn of the Lord. I, I, you know, I can't feel your amen, so it's like, Kaya Bahasha. Can, so, can I feel somebody's amen here? Amen. Is somebody ready for the Lord now? Hey, we are ready. Oh my goodness. So Rabba Shahata. Like I'm hearing, James has been ordained. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Master, but I decree the word of God upon somebody's life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sickness will not separate you from the love of God. Amen. From fulfilling the assignment of the Lord. I decree and declare, can I speak to somebody today? Speak. Prophesy. Please sit down for a few minutes. Let me show you this Mark revelation Kadabahaya. because it's so important. Here. Now this. Now is it not because the Lord had anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? Now Saul could not, you know, could not wait for the prophet before he did the sacrifice. And that was where he failed. Because it was the prophet who was also, someone was a prototype of a priest and a prophet. So he ran very high in the realm of the spirit. Because if you are not a prophet and a priest, you cannot ordain kings. But he was not a king. That was the only thing he lacked. And so he required the kingship order from the king himself. But for he was a prophet, a representative of God, as an oracle to institute. And so Saul understood the kingship order. And that is why he started explaining to them that do you know what kingship means and the interpretation of kingship? And do you know that the king is going to tax you and the king is going to do this and the king is going to take your maidens and your servants and your sons and daughters to war and all that? Do you know these things? And the people said, yes, we know. We want this. We don't care. Now, these people asked for this king and God gave them their king. But not knowing God had his own king. But let's see how this thing failed. Let me show you something. Number one. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And Benjamin was actually, listen to me carefully. Benjamin was actually the brother of Joseph. He was the last born of Rachel or Rahel. Is it not so? Okay. Now, so, and this lady gave birth to only two boys and he, she died. And she was the beloved of Jacob. The anointed, the one with the anointing. And the one whose name in heaven was called Israel. Israel, the chosen of God. Now, he was supposed to be the representative of the Israel on the earth realm for God to bring the original Israel. I want to show you something deep in the realm of the spirit. So the Bible says, are not all Israel who are of Israel. Am I going somewhere? Good, 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 good. So it's not everybody from Israel who is from Israel. That means all the Israelites you see, they are examples of the better Israel to come. And can I announce that you are the Israel that God was talking about. I thought somebody would jump and shout. Yay. Do you know you are the Israel God was talking about? Yes. Because you are the one the Bible says that in the last days I will, I will select and put my spirit upon them. I will forgive their iniquities. And they are my chosen generation. The royal priesthood. The holy nation. They have been selected to show for the praises of God. Hey. The Bible says now they are offering in righteousness I will accept her. That means they are offerings and all that in righteousness in, in, in the time past in Bethel in, in Jericho and all that were rejected. The Bible says clearly that God himself abhorred the offerings from Bethel 
which was actually the house of God, that was the replica of the house of God in Israel at the time. Why? Because they, they were profane sacrifices there. So God rejected them. But God says, I'll look for a time for because there's going to be some people uh, that my son, my righteous seed uh, and the seed of Abraham is going to raise. Uh, and those are the people that will offer burnt offerings in righteousness. Uh, and I came in the volumes of the book to announce to you that this word that you heard in the Bible is fulfilled in your day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I hear some people jumping and shouting and receiving? No way. We receive. In the name of Jesus. Man. Now hear the word of God. Hear this. So, this Rachel gave birth to two sons. Now, one son was called Benjamin. And Saul came from the son Benjamin, who was actually the last born. But the one that God had chosen. <laughs> that God replaced the Levites. There's two sons. Remember. Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph was the one who was selected as the, the head of the family to sustain the entire family. This was years. And so Saul came from Benjamin. And that was not what God was looking for. God was looking for a kingship order from Judah. And that is the reason why today the Israelites are called Jews. Why? Because of Judah. All the 12 tribes have been cut off. Only Judah was accepted. And then Joseph ratified by fire because of his sons that were blessed in crossing of the hands. Determining which one is greater and which one is lesser. So one of these families was the one that was chosen. We trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanarchyministries.org www.worldwidewordministries.org or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anarchy Ministries.